Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Cyber, where we break down complex cyber topics to empower you and your organization. And today we've got an incredible interview lined up with Nick Biasini, head of outreach at Talos, one of the top threat intelligence teams in the entire world. Now in this conversation, Nick is gonna take us on a deep dive into the current cyber threat landscape, like who the key players are, the latest tactics they're using, and how you can defend your organization against these evolving threats. We'll cover everything from the most concerning emerging threats to the technical details of the TTPs and malware families that are wreaking havoc on society today. Now, whether you're a seasoned security pro or just starting your cyber career journey, this interview is packed with insights that you won't want to miss. So stick around because you're about to gain some powerful knowledge straight from the front lines of cybersecurity. Now let's dive into this interview. So right now, I feel like there's two primary paths that we're seeing, right? First and foremost, you have the criminal groups. They're more interested in financial gain. This today largely means ransomware cartels, data extortion, or some feeder group that's feeding into that initial access brokers, info stealers, something like that. And then on the flip side, you have the state sponsored groups. Those are the ones that are going for data, data theft, espionage, uh, destructive acts that tend to be far more targeted and they are a little bit more sophisticated, use zero days a lot more, that type of stuff. What are some of the most concerning emerging threats that your team is tracking? So there's kind of two uh, almost opposite things that we're tracking. So first and foremost, huge use of ballot accounts. So more and more adversaries are really focused on trying to log in with legitimate credentials instead of using things like active exploitation. On the flip side of that, we are seeing an alarming amount of zero day use specifically around state sponsored groups and more specifically in mobile platforms. More and more things like mercenary spyware, private sector offensive actors, that landscape is very concerning and very difficult to secure. What are some prominent threat actor groups? Uh, so let's talk about Lockbit. They're one of the longest lasting and most prolific ransomware groups. They've been around for a very, very long time. Uh, they participate in the affiliate frameworks just like a lot of the cartels do. What that basically means is they have freelancers that are effectively red teamers that operate in these spaces, compromise networks to deliver ransomware for a percentage of the cut. Some other percentages can be very high. Uh, and like most groups, they're focused on things like living off the land binaries, and a commercial available tooling to try and evade detection. And also they're again, focused on using valid accounts. We just keep seeing it time and time again. What sets Lockbit apart? Um, they're similar in, in a lot of the ransomware groups, kind of what makes them stand out is their longevity because they've been around for almost since the beginning. And one of the most common things we see in the ransomware landscape is how short lived these groups can be and how quickly they can rebrand and disappear. Lockbit has had some serious staying power and have really been effective at compromising victims for a very long time. What are some of the most common tactics used by these actors? Yeah, um, as I said before, they're commonly using valid credentials. What's interesting is the way that they get that can be really varied. They could do things like phishing campaigns. They could deploy info stealers. They can buy the credentials from already deployed info stealers. They can work with initial access brokers that have already gained access. In the end, once they get on these systems, they're gonna try and evade detection. And one of the best ways they do that is through the use of living off the land binaries or the executables that are already available on the system or using commercial tools that are gonna be far, far more difficult to detect. How do threat actors target credentials and what methods do they use to bypass 2FA? So one of the most interesting things that organizations need to kind of square is data is everywhere now. So it's not just securing data in your own environment, it's securing data everywhere it's housed. And what we're starting to see adversaries do is acknowledge that and realize it. You don't necessarily have to compromise the enterprise itself. If you happen to get credentials into one of these platforms and they don't have MFA enabled, then you expose a huge amount of data. When it comes to actual MFA bypass attacks, one of the most important things organizations can do is deploy MFA in a secure way, doing things like challenge responses. So instead of just hitting a button and saying allow, you now have to enter a four or six digit code that allows the attacker, it requires the attacker to have you on the phone as opposed to just being able to bombard you with requests and get you to just hit a button, they have to actually talk to you. What are the most effective strategies for companies to protect themselves? So MFA is without a doubt, it's almost the, the bare minimum at this point. And again, deploying it with 
uh, in a strong manner with challenge responses to try and secure it, very important. For organizations that are especially concerned, you could go a step further and require things like managed devices. That, although expensive, does provide a, a huge amount of assurance for organizations because now you have a device that's a managed asset. You are assured that it's running a security stack. You have a large amount of visibility into it. And you can even do further things like uh, deploy certificates so that only managed devices can access your infrastructure. It really provides a much higher layer of security, albeit at a higher cost. What role does threat intelligence play in the process? Threat intelligence kind of underpins everything that we're doing, right? That That's the indicators that show us how the actors are changing and evolving, as well as indicators of how they're actively working. So you have kind of two sets of this. You have the things that they've actively done and indicators that you have something you should be concerned about, as well as the ways that they continue to change and evolve and the protections that we develop to stop these attackers from being successful. Are there any specific malware tools that are prevalent right now? Um, really the living off the land binaries, we still commonly see things like the, the offensive frameworks like Cobalt Strike, Brute Retail, those types of things are also very, very commonly used. They're very heavily used by red teaming. So we're seeing adversaries pick up the same type of behaviors because it's a great way to hide. And it's a fairly sophisticated product that provides a lot of capabilities that attackers would really benefit from. What's on the horizon? Uh, Lots of research. There's just lots of stuff going on right now. We're seeing lots of actors active all over the place. State sponsor groups are particularly active and we're still seeing financial groups, unfortunately, reaping very large uh, paydays from their attacks. I unfortunately don't expect that to slow down anytime soon. All right, that wraps up this conversation with Nick Biasini from Talos. I hope you found this deep dive into the threat landscape as eye-opening as I did. Now remember, staying informed is critically important for driving cyber risk reduction down for your organization. Now, if you enjoyed this interview, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Simply Cyber for more expert insights and actionable tips on securing your organization in driving your career. As always, if you have any questions or thoughts, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, stay secure.